this tutorial, we're going to talk about the workspace editor, not specifically how to create screens, targets, or masks, as there are other tutorials for how to do that. But this will cover all of the settings particular to the workspace editor and some of the changes we can make within the workspace editor here to make setting up screens, targets, and masks a little bit easier for you. So you'll notice that I've got some screens and targets created, and that's simply so that I can show you a couple of the features here in the workspace editor. So the first one we're going to start off with is the scaling option down here in the bottom right hand corner. And from here, you can choose any of these preset zoom levels, set your own via the custom option, or choose fit, which will fit all of your screens that you've created into the workspace editor in one view for you to see all at one time. Next up on the left is the ruler toggle. So you'll see right now it's blue and you can see that I have my horizontal ruler up here at the top of the screen and a vertical ruler here on the left hand side. And if I click that, you'll see it turns white and those rulers disappear. I can click it again to toggle it back on and it will toggle back on and you'll see those rulers once more. The next icon on the left is the grid. You can use the grid to help lay out a pixel to pixel or inch to inch representation of your project. The first option simply enables or disables the grid. So if I check the box, you'll see that there's the grid and I can uncheck it so that it disappears. And the next option here is to change the color of the grid. If that gray is a little hard to see, then you can change from one of these preset colors here, or you can click the color wheel and select any color here in the spectrum to change that grid color too. We'll go ahead and put that back at gray. So it's a little bit easier to see there. And then the last two options are spacing and subdivisions. Spacing is going to control the actual spacing between each of these blocks here in the grid. And this unit is going to be the same as the units that we'll cover just a little bit later. And then also subdivisions. And subdivisions can be a little bit hard to see while we're zoomed out so far. So if we zoom in, you're going to see that there in each of these major squares, you can see some little minor squares in there as well. And this is subdividing that area there in the grid. So there's 3x3, three 4x4. Three, four four. You can move it up and subdivide even further. This simply just helps you be able to arrange screens and targets very, very specifically as you can align them to those certain areas in the grid. And you'll see here as I zoom back out that now those subdivisions aren't quite as visible because I've zoomed out pretty far and those are pretty small subdivisions. So if you have these subdivisions turned on and you're not seeing them, then you just wanna make sure that you zoom in a little bit so that you can actually see those subdivisions. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the grid off and move on to the next section. After the grid comes workspace and alignment guides. When you enable the workspace guides, you can then click and drag from one of the rulers in the editor to create the guides that you can use to fine tune alignment of the items in the workspace editor. So you'll see right here, workspace guidelines. And again, you can change the colors of those. And then you would check this box here to show the guidelines. And once you've done that, you can click and drag from the horizontal to bring a guideline in. You can click and drag from the vertical to bring another guideline in. To remove these guides, all you need to do is simply just click and drag the vertical ones to the left and you'll see that the cursor changes to an X and that's showing you that it's going to delete there and the horizontal ones you'll click and drag up and you'll see that cursor change as well, letting you know that you're going to be deleting that as well. Beneath the workspace guideline options are alignment guides. These include relative spacing and sizing along with object center and edge guides. You can see the object center and edge guides quite easily simply by when I move this, you'll see that the edge is outlined in yellow and then also straight through the center, both horizontally and vertically, I have a yellow line letting me know that I have hit both the exact edges of the screen and also the center of the screen behind it. I'm positioning this target on the screen and this is letting me know that I'm perfectly aligned. And also as I do this, you can see the relative spacing guides on the left and right of this target, letting me know that the relative spacing between what I'm currently working with and the screens on either side is the exact same, letting me know that I have this spaced out exactly as I want it to be spaced. The last one there, the relative sizing guides, if I go to resize this target, you'll see that now I have an arrow and a line up the left-hand side of the target and all the way across the top, letting me know that this is the same size relative to everything else here I have in my workspace editor. So if I move that, you'll see that those guides disappear and as I come back to hit that exact size of everything else, you're going to see those guides reappear, letting me know that the sizing is exactly the same relative to the other options here in the workspace editor.
The next option after the guides is the background image. So we'll click here and you see all of the options here that we're able to change here with the background image. The first thing that you can do is choose one and then there's a couple different options you can change here. The background image can serve a couple different purposes. The first of which is if you have a large event coming up and you're going to have a lot of screens connected but maybe you won't actually be able to connect to those screens until the time of the event, you could actually input either a photo you have of a you know a pre-production drawing or a wireframe drawing of what that event is going to look like and where all of your screens are going to be and then you could actually arrange your screens to those particular locations here in the workspace editor and it just provides you with a very easy visual of exactly how your screens are going to look in that scenario and then you can continue working in pvp with that another fun option here is that you can also just choose a file and we'll come in here to my content folder and you could actually just input your organization's logo and then down here on the in these settings you can change the position of it so we can change this maybe to move it over a little bit and you can also change the size however you can also just click and drag on the triangles and also move it that way so i can size this up by doing that and then i can click and drag on the image and move it over here for instance so now, this is just an easy way that now I've got my company's logo in here and then every time you go into the workspace editor, that's gonna be there and it's just a simple little touch that's kinda cool just so you can have a logo in there as well. Uh, you certainly don't have to use this option and at any point you can disable the view of that and if you don't wanna use it at all, then obviously you could just remove the background image and now there's no image there and you don't have to worry about it at all. And the last option here is unit scaling. Unit scaling allows you to create a custom scaling here in the workspace editor by choosing between points, inches, feet, millimeters, centimeters, or meters to convert to pixels. So just as a note, this is not going to actually affect your actual output. So you'll see here that my three screens are all 1920 by 1080, and those screens are going to be 1920 by 1080, and my outputs will still be 1920 by 1080. But what this might allow you to do is you could say, for instance, unit scaling, and I could put that in inches, and I could set this up so that my 55-inch TVs and my 70-inch TVs, or whatever those may be, could actually be scaled properly in here, just so that I would see a more lifelike representation of the actual setup that I'm going to be using. So again, this is not going to have any actual output so again, these changes are not actually going to affect my output. This is more just for seeing the scaling here in the workspace editor. So that's about it for the options here in the workspace editor. And like I mentioned earlier, for more information on actually setting up the screens, targets, and masks, and the rest of the use of the workspace editor, you can check out those tutorials that are available at www.renewedvision.com.